In this video, we're going to talk about a few addition properties, particularly the commutative property of addition, the associative property, the inverse, and the identity property of addition. So let's go ahead and begin. Let's start with the commutative property of addition. Here's the formula that goes with that. A plus B is equal to B plus A. So what does that mean? The order upon which you add two numbers doesn't matter. The value will not change. It will remain the same. So let's say A is 5 and B is 3. 5 plus 3 and 3 plus 5 will give us the same value. 5 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 5. So if we add 5 to 3, we get 8. If we add 3 to 5, we also get 8. The value remains the same. So for instance, if we add 4 plus 7 or 7 plus 4, we're going to get the same answer. 4 plus 7 is 11, and 7 plus 4 is also 11. So that's the basic idea behind the commutative property of addition. A plus B is equal to B plus A. Now, let's move on to the associative property of addition. The formula that goes with that is this. A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. Now, when you're only adding numbers, the order upon which you add doesn't matter if you're just only adding numbers, and that's a big if. Now, when you're working on math and you're following the rules of the order of operations, PEMDAS, typically you would work inside the parentheses. So we're going to do an example of that shortly. Let's say A is 3. Actually, let's use our old values. We're going to say A is 5, B is 3. C, we're going to make it 4. So we have a plus b, that's 5 plus 3, and then we have a c value, and then a, and then plus b plus c. So let's work inside the parentheses first. 5 plus 3 is 8. 3 plus 4 is 7. 8 plus 4 is 12. 5 plus 7 is also 12. So once again, it doesn't matter the order of which you add things. If you're only adding, the value will remain the same. Now, let's move on to the identity property of addition. The formula associated with this is a plus 0 is equal to a, which means if you add 0 to anything, you're going to get the thing that you started with. Adding 0 to a number doesn't change the value of that number. The value remains the same. So if we add 0 to 5, we're going to get 5. If we add 0 to 4, we're going to get 4. If we add 0 to a negative number, like negative 3, we're still going to get negative 3. So that's the identity property of addition. A plus 0 is equal to A. Now let's talk about the inverse property of addition. A plus negative A is equal to 0. In other words, negative A negates the value of A. They cancel each other out and they become nothing they give you a total value of 0. So let's say we have 5 and negative 5. 5 plus negative 5, this is the same as 5 minus 5, which is 0. 4 plus negative 4, they negate each other. They cancel out or add up to 0. 3 plus negative 3, same thing. It's going to add to 0. And you can visualize this on a number line. 
So if you travel three units to the right, basically you're adding three, you'll get to three. And then if you add negative three, which is the same as subtracting by three, you go back to where you started. So you basically had a net result of not going anywhere. You end up back at zero. So that's how that works. A plus negative A cancels each other out. So those are the properties of additions that uh, you may be tested on in a typical high school or college algebra course. So let's review the rules that we've learned. The first one was the commutative property of addition. And the formula for that is A plus B is equal to B plus A. Next, we have the associative property of addition. And it's A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. Next, we have the identity property of addition. And for that, it's A plus 0 is equal to A. And finally, the inverse property of addition. That's A plus negative A is equal to 0. So that's it for this video.